So uh, welcome once again, friends, to the Pondering Couch. Here we are, and uh, great to catch up with you, Denzel. I was away this weekend, but I have had a chance to listen to the terrific sermon you preached. I, I find it so helpful uh, on Acts 2 and uh, the birth of the church and, and the coming of the Spirit. Uh, really thought-provoking. And I guess there are a couple of things we thought we'd sort of yeah, unpack, ponder, po ponder upon <laughs> yes. um, being, being here on the couch. Yeah. The thing that really spoke to me, Denzel, about what you said was one of the, the, the biggest sort of manifestations or impact of the Spirit coming. Yeah. When we talk about the Spirit being at work, I mean, I think we, we often look for, I don't know, the spectacular stuff, yeah, don't we? Um, the the tongues, uh, the miracles, and yeah. so on. And of course, there were tongues on the day of Pentecost. But what you brought out so helpfully was that that wasn't just something exciting mm. and spectacular in its own right. Mm. It, it was overcoming barriers yeah. and, and breaking barriers down. And mm. uh, I, I don't know if you just any more thoughts on that. Mm. This idea that one of the roles the Spirit plays is to help break down barriers or help bring understanding and fight between people who actually otherwise wouldn't be sharing the same space and yeah. the same community yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was quite interesting, especially that we looked at previously in Matthew 28, which I mentioned that Jesus tells his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. And for some reason, people from all nations were present in Jerusalem at that particular mm -hmm. time. And um, what I recognize as well is that even though most of them probably all spoke the same common language in terms of maybe Greek and Aramaic, there was something about hearing their own language that kind of got them interested in what was going on in terms of, hold on, they, they speak in my native language, something that was important for them in terms of language and so on. And I do wonder if there's something that we can learn about that today in terms of the Holy Spirit and he is about the big stuff and the healings and so on but more importantly he is about that unity that bringing into to oneness and maybe there's gifts that he can give us that will be able to connect with people who we feel like we've never been able to connect with before whether it's young people or older people uh, people from different languages different backgrounds and um, the spirit is able to bring that sense of unity together um, but i think it, it is a struggle for the early church because even though we look at the early church the early church wasn't perfect church yeah. um, and I think down the line even though the Holy Spirit was willing to bring that unity from different people we see that people being people um, set up some ba um, kind of barriers they set up those barriers again we see particularly with the, the Jews and the Gentiles um, and I think there's something interesting about that maybe even though the Holy Spirit is willing to and able to empower us to connect with different people are there things that we're doing to kind of set up barriers um, that people are not feeling that sense of welcome or uh, feeling um, able to worship God freely within our church context. So, so yeah, it's definitely things I was thinking about in terms of if the early church did uh, or did that, even though the Spirit was willing, um, is there something that we as a church, not just SBC but worldwide, could be doing as well today? Yeah, that's interesting. We yeah. we were just talking while we before recording about, I mean, Peter gives that great sermon that you were talking about yeah. and it's Peter who is used in Acts 10 which we'll yeah. get to later uh, the vision coming down on yeah. uh, of, of the foods that are acceptable but then we get to Galatians don't we and yeah. Peter and Paul have had this falling out and it seems as if Peter has somehow rolled back, back a yeah. little bit yeah. is it the case that I mean, it's exhausting keeping up with the spirit and mm. what the spirit is doing mm. do you think we sometimes just find it too hard <laughs> and after a certain period of time we just want to retreat a little bit into where we feel safe yeah i think i think that's possible um i think the holy spirit is always willing to, to mm. work and i think the holy spirit does work within our context as well and I, we've kind of spoke about this in the foyer where um, there may be a different way that the holy spirit might be working and maybe um, a place in Africa or a village in Africa um, may be very different to how it's working in SBC. So I think the Holy Spirit does look at our context and is able to work with us in that. But I think once we start using our own human power and our own human strength, certainly uh, 
people are so wary because it's such a big yeah. task um, and it's easy to just retreat and just go into that comfort zone yeah. um, so I think that's yeah that's definitely possible because Axe was just you read Axe I know you said Axe all the way through yeah, last yeah, year yeah. you're, you're yeah. a Thursday evening group yeah I mean it's it's incredible but it is a roller coaster ride yeah. I mean you think it must have been fantastic to be to be there yeah. but it must have been uh, draining in yeah. a sense for those who, who were involved. Yeah, I was thinking even that day, Peter, I mean the Holy Spirit comes, Peter preaches his sermon, you see at the end about 3,000 people mm. that give their life to Jesus and then they're baptised as well. So I'm even picturing physically, especially having a small team around them, how are they able to do all of this work? And again, you know there's the Holy Spirit who is empowering them, but they're still human beings, so there still is that kind of difficulty um, where, yeah, Tiredness comes in, but then trying to seek and be in the spirit as well. So it's, yeah, it must have been difficult. It must have been very difficult. But yeah. Wow. There was another thing you mentioned, Denzel, when we were in conversation earlier. And I wondered, yeah, maybe we could sort of ponder and unpack yeah. that a little yeah. bit more as well. But I think what I heard you saying was something along the lines of how there is something uh, explosive or, mm. or, or it's bursting out from the walls. Yeah. Uh, of church or, yeah. or, the, or the walls of where they're meeting so it doesn't doesn't just stay in one place yeah. there's, there's a kind of reaching out and moving out which we yeah. find e even on this first day yeah yeah I found that quite interesting and again linking back to Jesus telling them to go and be witnesses uh, so they know that they can only be effective disciples um, when they wait and the Holy yeah. Spirit comes upon them but now the Holy Spirit is upon them so don't, you don't need to wait now the Spirit's working so I think in my kind of church background, um, growing up as a child, I've, in the church I was in, the Pentecostal church, which kind of focused a lot on the work of the Holy yeah. Spirit and more particularly the, the, the big gifts or however you want to call it, uh, tongues and healings and so on. Um, but everything seemed to be just confined to the building that we were yeah. in or the worship place we were meeting. So people we haven't, you know, encountered with the Holy Spirit. Um, and then when the music stopped, when the service stopped, the people would just be the same. Like, yeah. like nothing's happened. I was yeah. really amazed by that. Hold on, like if I really encountered the Holy Spirit, I used to think of it as a child. I mean, I'll be speaking about this every single day. And mm. when, when the service stops, I'll still be speaking about it. But as soon as the service finished, like it's just that like everything went the, the same. And I feel like we see in Acts, the Holy Spirit doesn't just, it's not just for the disciples to have this, nice experience or yeah. this warm fuzzy encounter which was great but the holy spirit can't be contained and it's just spread to us to the streets so that they can be witnesses and it's almost like the holy spirit kind of does this work to remind them that you can be witnesses and we see a peter takes initiative when they see the works of the spirit mm. the common people and they have no idea what's going on and peter then becomes a witness and he shares yeah. about jesus i'm I always wonder what would have happened if peter never preached if they just saw the tongues saw the gifts but just said nothing i i don't think the impact would have been that powerful but yeah. peter actually speaking and explaining what was happening explaining jesus how he gives these gifts how you can have the same gifts too is what really brought that that impact yeah, yeah. so what does that mean i'm just wondering yeah what what what's the connection maybe between okay what what he says and and, and this uh, this this breaking out if you like of the walls of the barriers and I'm, I'm just wondering what that means for us are we too ready to think well it's just about sunday yeah. uh and, and and we go from one sunday to the next mm -hmm. is there something maybe about being alert to the yeah. spirit yeah the other six days of the week yeah certainly i think it's understanding that hold on holy spirit is not just for sunday service mm -hmm. holy spirit is for every single day yeah. including in my workplace including um, uh, at school wherever I'm at, the Holy Spirit is there, we, we shouldn't confine the Holy Spirit just to a room yeah. where Christians meet, um, but the Holy Spirit lives in all of us and he dwells in all of us. So there is something about taking the Holy Spirit and being alert to the Holy Spirit's work in everywhere we go. Uh, and that sense of, yes, the Holy Spirit gives us these uh, amazing gifts uh, to edify ourselves and so on, but one of the, the things that Jesus reminds his disciples constantly about what the Holy Spirit would do was, will be to allow them to be effective witnesses, yeah. which means speaking to people who are not Christians um, and so on. So I think that's probably something we need to Yeah, and the Spirit, 
I mean, we first read of the Spirit brooding over the water. It's a creation. Yes. The Spirit yeah. is creative, isn't it? Right. So yeah. where God's Spirit is, there is new life being Absolutely. created. And, and is it the case that we sometimes think, well, it's the church's job to create the new life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the church is a place of creation, but actually the new life is being created wherever the Spirit Absolutely. is. We just need to go and follow. Yeah. We just need to jump on the Spirit's way. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's wonderful, isn't that? Yeah. That, that, that image of... Um, and, and, and riding on a wave is much easier than trying yeah. to generate your own Absolutely. energy. Yeah. You're just yeah. going along, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Dan. So it's been fantastic to Absolutely. talk this over. And uh, I think we're going to be back here, or I will be back with another member of the ministry team. Yeah. And we will be thinking about the end of Acts 2 yeah. this coming Sunday and roll into the following week next time we're here and yeah. talking about it uh, a little bit more. So. Hope your week's going well, everyone. You got to Wednesday evening. Well done. And uh, I hope you see God's spirit at work doing lots of good stuff before we're back in church on Sunday. Bless you.